Hey everyone, it's Mr. Drake. We are going to continue on with Greece today. Uh, you should have already learned a little bit about the roots of Greek civilization with the Minoans and Mycenae and the Trojan War and things of that nature. Today we're going to look a little bit more at government and politics and how society was set up in Greek city-states. Now, first to review the geography a little bit, you should have already done a map activity, but we'll talk a little bit about this just to set the stage once again. Greece is located on the Balkan Peninsula, which is in southeastern Europe. It's up against the Mediterranean Sea. It's east of Italy. Um, it's located near Asia Minor, as you can see there on the map, and if you go a little further east, if the map continued on, you'd be in the Middle East, or what we studied earlier in the course as Mesopotamia. Now, Greece was never a strong unified empire, like we talked about the Persians and the Babylonians and what a large empire they have with one strong central ruler. That never happened in Greece because you of the water and mountains in the country uh, dividing up the land geographically, so it was pretty hard to get everybody on one page and under one government. So instead what ended up happening was that Greece was divided into what were known as city-states, which are these tiny, sort of like mini-countries almost. You've got one central city, and then you've got countryside, and maybe a few villages around it, but that was it. Uh, so you don't have a big country, you've just got these small, isolated, again, sort of mini-countries. And a lot of those were rivals with each other, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the differences between the two, philosophically, politically. Um, but a lot of these societies sailed all over the Mediterranean Sea. They explored, they traded, and developed culture based on what they encountered in places like uh, the Middle East. Now, as we'll talk about later in this video, the gods were incredibly important in ancient Greece and all of the city-states. So most cities in the middle, at the top of a hill, in many cases, had what was known as an acropolis or a temple that was built for the gods. And you can see in that picture, sort of the top, that building with the columns, that's the acropolis in Athens. The ruins of it uh, still stand there today. Now, governments were often monarchies, at least at first, that's where the king is in charge, but over time the nobility, the wealthy landowners, sort of uh, strong-armed the king into giving them some power, so you begin to have an aristocracy develop. An aristocracy is sort of your your elites, your nobles, the, the wealthier people, the people who are well-connected. Um, Today, even, you will hear people who are rich and, and have friends in high places referred to as aristocrats. And I mentioned in the uh, previous slide that trade was very important to the ancient Greeks. And as people began to trade with other civilizations, they would go to Egypt, they would go as far west as Spain, go into the Middle East. These people got incredibly rich, and they, as a result, they were able to uh, gain some influence and power in the government, too. And they developed what is known as an oligarchy. And an oligarchy is when power is in the hands of a handful of people. Now, there were lots of city-states in Greece, hundreds even, but we're going to focus today on two, two of the most important, most influential ones, and you'll see there are two city-states that developed in very different ways, and even though they were both very powerful, they were very, very dissimilar. And to quote a movie from a few years ago, this is Sparta. So in Sparta, you have two kings actually. They ruled together. And there's a council of elders who would advise the kings. And there was an assembly that made decisions as well. And the assembly was all the males in Sparta who were over the age of 30. So if you were a male, if you were a citizen, you weren't a slave, and you were over the age of 30, you were able to contribute and participate in this assembly. Now the most important thing about the Spartans probably is how warlike they were. And in future videos in this unit, you will actually learn more about the specific wars in which the Spartans fought. But it says something about the Spartans that as soon as young boys were born, they were looked at and determined if they were going to be healthy and, and strong, and if they appeared to be sickly or weak in any way, they were usually just left abandoned in the countryside to die. So think about that. Um, young boys were taken away from their families at seven years old to begin training a, for a very hard, very difficult, very rigorous military life. And war and military is the centerpiece of Spartan society. There was a saying in Sparta when a man went off to war, either come home with your shield 
or on it. Meaning, be carrying your shield in triumph or be carried in dead on the shield. Women were expected to raise healthy boys for the military. Uh, they did not take part in education. Their primary goal was to raise warriors. And Sparta remained primitive because they thought they were better than everyone else and did not accept foreign influence and really kept to themselves. So as a result, they do not develop this rich culture that Athens and other Greek city-states eventually have. They remain very warlike and, and very single-minded in that regard. Now Athens actually developed very differently than Sparta and we will talk more as the unit progresses about how to rich a culture Athens had. Today we're going to focus primarily on the government. Like Sparta, Athens starts off as a monarchy, but the people weren't very happy. Um, there was a lot of debt, especially from poorer people like farmers and merchants. There were even cases of people having to sell themselves or their families into slavery just to pay off debt uh, and would have to be slaves for a period of time before they were freed again. But eventually you begin to see that change under a leader named Solon, whose bust you see there. He opened up government offices to more people, so it wasn't just the aristocracy and the wealthy landowners that were uh, holding all of the power. The assembly began to have a say in some really important matters regarding war or you know who was going to be the leader, for example. And the economy began to grow, and it was grown through exports. Um, wine, olive oil, things like that, that that Greece is famous for, he encouraged those things to be sold all over the known world, which brought money back into Athens, which made everything better. Now, most importantly, Athens is known as the birthplace of democracy. And that took several forms. First of all, there was a Council of 500, which was a group of, of the citizens in Athens, and that's considered the first ever modern legislature. And a legislature is a group of people who create and vote on laws. In the United States, that would be the Congress, if you're familiar with the way American government works. Now, they did have democracy, there was voting, but it was very limited compared to like what we have in America today. There weren't that many people that were qualified to be citizens. You had to be male. You had to be landowner. You could not be a slave if you wanted to be a citizen. Women had virtually no role. It was almost completely, you know, exclusively limited to men. And education was encouraged to spread the ideals of democracy and teach about Greek culture. So, the you know, democracy was sort of fostered by the fact that people grew up learning about the Greek systems of government and how you know Greek culture had developed and the idea was that when those people were older and making the decisions they would be well informed and, and more educated. Now Athens and Sparta were very very bitter rivals and fought and bickered constantly and again we'll talk about that as the unit goes on but there are some things that Athens and Sparta and really a lot of other Greek city-states had in common. Almost all of them were polytheistic, and they believed in many gods. You're probably familiar with some of them, and some of them we're going to talk about in this unit. Zeus and Athena and Aphrodite and uh, Dionysus and you name it. And as we talked about earlier with the Acropolis, cities were known for building these huge temples uh, that were very ornate with a lot of precious metals in them and stuff that were built to honor the gods. Greeks did have a huge superiority complex. Uh, they looked down on the rest of the world, especially from the Middle East and Egypt. They're like, okay, yeah, they've got some cool stuff and we'll trade with them, but we're not going to do things the way they do them. And they called them barbarians, and that's really where the term barbarian originated, talking about these lesser people who just were not as sophisticated as, as the Greeks were. And one big example of Greek unity is the Olympics. The Olympic Games originated in ancient Greece, and they were designed to honor the gods, especially Zeus, who was, of course, the chief among all of the Greek gods who lived on Mount Olympus. And they would even, if there were huge wars going on during this, uh, during this time of the Olympic Games, they would stop the wars. They would have a truce so that city-states could participate in the Olympic Games. And some of the events we have in the Olympics today originated in the ancient Greek Olympics, like discus and a lot of the running events and wrestling. Those were, the, those were really big events. Now, eventually the Olympic Games died out, but they did resurrect uh, in 1896. That was the first modern Olympics. And to honor the Greek tradition of the Olympics, the first modern Olympics were actually held in Athens. 
And that will just about do it for today. Be sure to be checking your syllabus so you'll know due dates for assignments and activities and when your tests and quizzes are going to be. You can start giving unit extension activities a look as soon as Mrs. Hall and I get them up on Moodle. And you will have a graphic organizer to complete on Greek city states, especially comparing Athens and Sparta. And again, check your syllabus so you'll know when that's going to be. As always, thanks for listening, and be sure to ask me or Miss Hall if you have any questions. Cheers!